Hi, and welcome back to Security Simplified. So this week, let's talk about something that we haven't talked much before on this channel, but one of the most important lessons you'll learn in both computer science and cybersecurity is how do you effectively teach yourself new things? So before we get started, let's talk a little bit about my background in technology. I have a college degree in computer science, and now I work in application security. And from very early on in college, I actually found security topics really, really interesting. But my university was not really offering that many security specialized courses. So this means that in order to explore the field of security, I actually had to teach myself a lot of the things. So I started to teach myself binary exploitation and web hacking through the internet. And if you're a student looking to become a developer or a security person, then learning how to teach yourself is really useful when you don't have access to a mentor or an official degree program. And as the field of computer science and security is constantly changing, it's really important that you master the skill of teaching yourself new things so that you can upgrade your skill set even after you successfully launch a career in the field. So let's get started. The first step to teaching yourself is that you need to make a plan. Think about when you are taking a university course or a high school course. On the first day of each course, you always receive a syllabus, right? That outlines exactly what you'll be learning that semester and what the timeline would look like. And so when you're teaching yourself, you want to do the exact same thing. In order to effectively teach yourself, you need to determine what are the topics that you need to learn and what are the subtopics that you need to master in order to master that topic, as well as in what sequence and timing you should teach these concepts to yourself. And as a beginner, this can be quite hard, right? Because you don't really know what the field is about yet. So let's say that you're trying to learn about a new vulnerability class, server-side request forgery. How do you then identify the major themes of this vulnerability that you need to know? Well, you can go to Google and look at the major headlines of each article on the topic. For instance, let's say that you are looking at this article about SSRF. You can see that it talks about the basics of what SSRFs are, what are the different types of SSRF, and how to bypass SSRF protection, as well as the attack surface for common SSRFs. You can write these down on a list of things that you need to know about the topic. And then ideally, you'll do this for a few articles. Go through the main themes of headlines of posts from different authors, because no one article can really talk about all the aspects of a single topic and do it properly. You can then order the list you have and determine how to teach yourself and in what order. You can determine the plan by starting with the topic that requires the least amount of knowledge about that subject matter, and then proceed to learn about things that build on top of the knowledge that you have already learned. And finally, you need to determine the time that you will spend on each item of your list. And that brings us to the next tip. Understanding a topic deeply usually takes much more time than you think. So I recommend budgeting at least twice the time you think you need on each topic and stick to that timeline. So if I think a topic will take me two days to fully understand, I'd budget four days for it. And even if you gain a basic understanding of the current topic well under that timeline, spending that extra time researching a topic will only deepen your understanding about that, top about that topic and about that subject matter. So going back to our previous example, I would recommend spending at least one week devoted to each of these topics. If you've already gained a good understanding of the basic SSR bypasses on day three of SSR bypass week, spend the rest of the week reading up on more obscure instances of SSR bypass and try to think of new and novel ways to do it in different environments. This kind of devoted and focused research time will really help you learn more deeply about a subject matter than most tutorials or courses can offer you. And next up, different people will prefer to learn in different ways. And you'll probably find that you prefer to learn about different topics and different ideas in different ways too. 
So experiment with different types of learning resources like blogs, videos, and interactive tutorials to see what you prefer. I personally really like writing things down and teaching others because that's when I feel like I really get a good grasp on a topic and a subject matter that I'm trying to understand. And then our next tip is that you need to verify your sources on the internet. So people who teach others online, like myself, we make mistakes too. And I have certainly made mistakes in my blog posts. So it's always good to verify your knowledge using multiple different versions of the same resource instead of using one website or one resource as your only source of information. For instance, if you are learning how to build uh, a certain feature efficiently, take that Stack Overflow answer with a grain of salt. What do other people say about the topic? Take that into account as well. And what do top experts in the field say about the topic? Always use more than one source of information and never trust a resource completely. And that brings us to our final tip. You should always track your progress by routinely testing yourself. As you execute your own learning plan, you need to make sure that you are on the right track and actually learning what you need to be learning. And reading about a topic versus actually retaining the knowledge are two very different things. There are a lot of ways to test your knowledge. And one of the things that I like to do is that I like to choose a topic and then write down everything I know about the topic and then go back and reference my notes to see if I missed anything or I got anything wrong. For instance, let's say that you're learning about defending against SQL injections. If you can write down every single defense you know about SQL injections and then explain their differences, and then the context you should use each defense in, and so on. And then go ahead and reference uh, the notes that you took while you're taking the course or while you're learning and see if there are any inconsistencies or anything you missed. And for a lot of things in computer science or in InfoSec, understanding and being able to do it are two very different things. You might understand something theoretically, like how to scan for a particular issue or how to implement a feature securely, but you need to actually dive into it to make sure that you can do it. So in this case, your exam for yourself should include projects rather than the conceptual validation that I talked about earlier. Uh, for example, if you want to understand how to write code that is safe from SQL injections, why not write a simple program and then try to attack your own program with SQL injection? The key is to make sure that you understood something rather than assuming that you do just because you studied it. This will help make sure that you are on track and then help you gain confidence in your own abilities as well. So lastly, during this process, there will be times where you cannot immediately understand something or you feel like something is completely beyond your level. This is completely normal and learning is not always a linear process, right? You will gain a better understanding of a concept once you learn about other concepts in the field or once your brain has had the time or the opportunity to process it. I call this letting the knowledge season. Sometimes the best thing to do is to let it go and then come back to it later. And learning something that is not immediately relevant can be really useful too. It can help you gain really valuable intuition and comfort around the topic, even if you know the technical details, the commands, or the exploits are not immediately useful. So for instance, you can try learning an older version of a language or a framework, or try reading an outdated technical book or read about the same topic, but in a different programming language or a different environment. These are all very helpful in helping you understand the bigger picture in the field. So this is another strategy that you can take um, when you're stuck in your learning.